right, this is gonna be one of those videos where I just go on a long angry tangent for about 10 minutes about what's been going on right now, so. Let's dive into it. All right, in today's video, we're gonna be going over what is happening currently as far as reptile registration laws go, how you are able to help this cause, and why you really should get behind this and stop being lazy and standing in the sidelines. So let's dive into this first. Number one, what is exactly going on? Now, I've been in the reptile hobby for around six or seven years now going on, and by far, this has got to be the biggest or just as many laws trying to be pushed and passed at the same time as I've ever seen before. You guys have seen plenty of US ARC stuff on any of the Facebook groups. It has been getting spammed and for good reason. Um, this is... <laughs> My god, this is some very scary stuff. I, I can only imagine how overburdened US ARC is right now with all of these things happening all across the country at the same time. So at this point, we really need to start supporting these people. This isn't a matter of like, oh, you know, they're helping out. Like, it's, it's shit's getting bad, man. I'm just gonna get down to it. Shit's getting real bad, and we'll be discussing why it's getting real bad. So, as far as exactly what has been going on with the anti-animal activist groups trying to ban our rights as reptile keepers, we've got four big things. Number one, New York. In New York, they are trying to ban all live animal shippings. Number two, South Carolina. They are trying to ban the tegus there since the passing of, or the attempted passing in Florida. Number three, Illinois. They are trying to ban all reptile education in any sort of the phrasing, so pretty much learning about exotic animals and reptiles won't be able to do that in Illinois if that's passed. And then number four, hey, we talked about on the channel already, SB 1414, all that good stuff, hey, they are coming right back at it. We, we, you guys think we won this just because we had that big push? No, they, they're just, they come right fucking back. This time, we've got it again. Pythons, big monitors, all the good stuff. South, southern, northern rock pythons, retics, burmese, anything like that is in threat of getting banned once again. So a little bit further, let's dissect each and every one and the big BS reasoning behind why these laws are trying to be passed. So, number one, New York. What is happening with New York? They are trying to ban all animal shipping, not just reptiles including. We're talking about anything live, pretty much fur, no fur, scales, lives in the water, lives in the land. You're not going to be able to ship it in New York. For the reasoning, what's the reasoning behind this? Because coronavirus. Because if the, if the bats had it, that means other animals can have it, so we got to ban that. That's the best they can come up with. Now, banning New York shipping as a whole state of not being able to ship anything, um, that's super detrimental to a number of cases. Uh, number one, New York, it is a port. That means we get importation through there. Hey, what happens when you get the importation? Well, now you can't ship it out of New York. So that raised some questions and problems that needs to be leaped over. Number two, exportation. Trying to get animals into Canada, you gotta go through New York to go to your middleman that ships it over to Canada. Won't be able to do that anymore as far as New York is concerned with this animal laws. Number three, New York is a pretty large place as far as the reptile hobby goes in the New England area. It's of course where the White Plains show is, the Reptile Expo, pretty much the biggest reptile expo in New England area, is hosted in New York. And, ah oh man, I, I, I'm not sure how to articulate this video, I just, I, I, I'm already, I'm getting so fucking built up and angry about this because, Ah, it's so infuriating. Um, Number two, Florida. Florida is back at it again with another proposal with Florida Fish and Wildlife. They are coming back in two days to write their final proposal. Number one, eliminating commercial breeding and pet ownership of these high 16 high risk reptiles. Put the high risk reptiles on state's prohibited list and then the 16 reptiles will be the ones I stated earlier. Of course, Burmese, Rich, pretty much any of the big stuff, all the big monitors, all the big pythons are getting put on that list or being tried to put on that list once again. Of course, Florida and Fish and Wildlife Life has this as a justification to eradicate the invasive animals that are there. Not saying that is not a problem, but also saying that is not going to help. Uh, there's a little bit more information. I made a video about that last year when SB 14 and 906, I believe, were uh, on the table back in 2020. But they're back again. They're trying to shoot it once more, and it's dumb. It it's just... It's ridiculous, I guess. And then speaking of big reptile bans in Florida, since then South Carolina has adopted some of that policy, including going into the big Tegu ban in South Carolina. Of course, the justification of this one being that, well, they're uh, they're invasive to Florida, so and I found we found them in South Carolina, so they're gonna come and they're gonna be invasive up there. Even though if you 
if you even look at South Carolina's weather temps in the winter, I, I don't care about brumation. I don't care that tegus can warm their body of up to 10 degrees in certain situations. Um, there is no tegu that is going to survive a South Carolina winter. It's just, it's not feasible. Um, again, just a weak, weak excuse on their end to try to justify this. It's ridiculous is the only term I can come up with. Um, I mean, really, like, ugh. And then finally, the animal program ban is happening in Illinois, which I'm actually just finding out is now also happening in Oregon at the same time. So we got Illinois and Oregon trying to ban animal programs. Why? I... I have no understanding. <laughs> the, the, the others are all weak excuses. Don't get me wrong, but at least they're like some way just it's some way justifiable in the public's eye of like okay, so Florida invasive. Oh, tegu's bad. Eat native stuff. Have to ban, ban, ban. But with uh, banning exotic animal programs and just any sort of animal educational groups to help learn about this stuff, just. It has to be the stupidest one out of all the ones I've seen. This is by far just the biggest reach. Just, I mean, obvious. It's, it's completely obvious that this is, of course, the agenda of these animal activist groups. Like, there's no, like, oh, well, it could be this. You know, there's some justification. It's literally, we don't like you keeping animals. We don't want the public educated about them, so we are going to ban them. It's... That's all it could be. I mean, you, you try to give me some half-cocked excuse on why you think animal bans should be, um, or animal educational programs should be banned, and I'll, I'll listen to that for sure. Oh, also, as of last week, I just am reading this now, um, Alaska's trying to ban 201 species of salamanders in that state. So that leaves, that gives us now, we've got New York, Illinois, South Carolina, Florida once again, Oregon, and Alaska in the span of around six weeks trying to ban animals in some way, shape, or form. All right, now that we talked about all the crap that is being spilled all over the country with just some weak-ass excuses, let's get into why you need to help why you need to step up and stop being on the sidelines and just hoping, oh, everything will work out, or just thinking, oh, well, you know, I don't own monitors or tegu, so it's not that big of a deal. Let's, uh, let's get into that part of it. Number one, the government and your state representatives do not give a flying shit about you as a reptile keeper. In most cases, the government does not understand why you even want to keep reptiles, does not care that you keep reptiles, and or does not even like the fact that you keep reptiles or like reptiles in general. I don't know how many strangers you've met where you mentioned that you own snakes or some sort of reptiles and you get the ew or scared response in fear? Uh, that does not change when we're talking about state representatives. Those are the same people you're walking around on the street just with the power to actually Actually inhibit you from owning these animals. Now, however, I will tell you two things that the government and your state representatives do care about. That is number one, money. Number two, making themselves look good and furthering their own agenda. Now, how are they able to do that? With groups like animal activists such as PETA, imploring them with boatloads of money in order to ban these animals to further their agenda by making themselves also look good. Again, Florida state ban. Oh, well, if we ban tegus, you know, that's problem solved. We banned them. We're not going to pay attention anymore after we ban them, so for the public eye, everything's all good. Government looks good and the government gets paid. That's the only two things they care about. Now, when your state representative have failed you as a party, it is up to you, the individual, to make a difference and try to help stop what is happening right now. This does not include people like the big names out there, the big titans. You cannot expect this to fall on their hands and have them do the boatload of work and upfront with financial costs in order for you to keep your rights. This is about everyone joining together and making sure that we have an impactful cause to make sure that these bans do not happen. Again, I said it last year, I said it the year before this, this does not stop. Florida, great fucking example. SB 1414. Hey, we finally we got it postponed. We got it stopped. It passed, but then it got revoked. What happens this year? They're getting it up once again. This is not going to stop. It doesn't matter if this fails or if it passes. It's going to keep going until every one of our animals, again, Fish and Wildlife, has made a clear statement. They do not want the ownership of any exotic animal in the private keepers. So, what does that mean for you? You're either going to sit down, lay down, and roll over, and let them take your animal 
animals away from you, or you're gonna join the cause and prevent this from happening. At this point in time in 2021, this has been the biggest upfront push of animal bans that I've seen in my entire years of keeping reptiles. We have six different states, did I say six or seven? I can't even remember. All across the country, we are being spread around with people trying to ban certain amount of exotic pets. This is, I can only imagine the stress US Ark is having in the financial pull of all the legal fees and everything they're gonna be needing in order to push these bans and push them back in order not to get them passed. This is our time as reptile keepers that it is no longer allowed to sit on the sidelines. You cannot just hope for the best from the big games going out there and helping out US Ark in order to keep your rights. This is up to every single person now. We need everyone on the same team unifying as one person to help the front of animal bans not being passed. At this point in time, there's literally zero excuses for you not to be contributing to US Ark. I mean, I can't even, I cannot stress how bad this is. I mean, holy shit, guys. We have six states at the same exact time banning reptiles of any amount throughout the entire country at the same time. The amount Deep shit. We're in deep shit. Let me just sum it up right there. Now that I've given you this wonderful pep talk, let's talk about the last section of this video, which is going to be how you can actually step up and help the cause instead of just sitting there on the sidelines. In order to vent this is, of course, supporting U.S. Arc. U.S. Arc needs all the help they can get at this point in time. And honestly, I mean... The membership starts so low, man. The starter membership bronze level, it's $5 a month, guys. It is literally, uh, any of the coffee drinkers, that is one coffee a month that you're missing in order to help you keep your animals. Is that really not worth it, man? The, the $5, the like, what is it, $1.25 a week that you have to spend in order to help keep your reptiles? Is, is it really just not worth it? I mean, you... You're keeping reptiles, and so like you really you can't spare the extra five dollars to pitch in and help the cause. It's there are no excuses at this point, man. I'm we're done. Honestly, I, I feel like everyone's reached the breaking point. We are having our third civil war this time in the reptile community, and it's time for everyone to step up, man. It's not time to leave it for the breeders, leave it for the big guys. The time it's time that every individual person steps up. Brian Barczyk, Kevin McCurley, me. Anyone that owns, a dude owns Leopard Gecko, everyone needs to step up. Other people too, I, I don't know, I just, uh, Brian, Brian, Kevin, and me, that's... <laughs> You get one chuckle out of me in this video. That was it. <laughs> Stepping even further from the individual keeper getting to that bronze level and helping out US Arc, I've seen a bunch of different things being suggested that I really support. I really think are great ideas. Uh, number one, the first time I was seeing it was from uh, Rob Christian, um, stating that in any, every reptile expo, they should not be allowing people that are not supporting US Arc. If you're making money off the reptile industry, you need to be putting some money back in there to help keep those reptiles, which honestly is just a great idea. If you're not supporting US Arc, you should not be allowed in reptile expo. You should not be allowed to vend reptile expos, excuse me. Uh, it just seems like a great thing. You need to display your badge, you need to show in some way, shape, or form that you are supporting US Arc in order to make money off of reptiles. Because if literally you're making financial gain for reptiles, but you have no bother in helping keep not only your revenue stream, so not only are you being, I mean, you could just be plain selfish, I don't care. You can be like, hey, I'm making money from ball pythons, so it would make more sense to me uh, keeping the reptile industry intact where it is so I can continue making money. So I'll just put a little money back to it so I can continue making more money. I mean, the math there is just easy. You want to keep making money, you have to put a little bit of money back. That's it. That's, it's literally, it's that simple. Straying away from just the financial speaking of this, number two would be stay aware and up to date with what is going on. You cannot play dumb. You cannot play, I've been in a rock. I don't know what's going on. It is up to every single person to stay intact to understand what is going on in America as far as reptile keepers go to keep you from still keeping these Reptiles, I what a great site is to go to in order to keep up to date with what's happening with any legal alerts as far as animal registration goes. Hey, US Ark, just go right in there and it gives you big up to date things with what is going on in the world as far as reptile bans go. Honestly, I mean, even to someone like me, I've been so busy focusing on New York, uh, South Carolina and Florida. I, I, I kind of know what's going on with Illinois, but I literally still had no idea that Oregon was trying to pass a law and Alaska was as well. It's literally, they're being pushed that many times that I can't can't even keep up with it. So we need as many eyes as we possibly can seeing that, hey, this thing is happening. We need to step forward. We need to see what the next step is in order to keep this thing going, guys. 
And then the last thing you need to do as I try to calm down and stop yelling into the video camera is going to be number three, we need to unify as a reptile community. The time, folks. We can't keep doing this stragged different groups. You know, we got the monitor people, we got the snake people, the ball python people, the Facebook experts, the gecko guys. We it, none of that matters anymore, man. It, none of it is going to matter if these laws do pass and they continue to be passed. Uh, we're all going to lose our animals eventually. So I, I don't care what you own. I don't care if you got one leopard gecko. I don't care if you're like me. You got a hundred reptiles. I don't care if you got five thousand reptiles. Uh, we need to unify with each and individual one of us because obviously, as you can tell, our state representatives are not doing it for us. It's time to come together as one big community and push back what is happening for us for years and years and years. You want to continue having this stuff happen, man? You want the Burmese thing to happen? All over again you want to get rid of your ball pythons it's eventually gonna happen if we don't step up and unify as one group and just to make a little side note of that stop making individual groups I'm I, it's keeping in mind with the unifying part but why okay like the irony of it of we're trying to unify as one specific group and then like 18 people make their own like Facebook groups of supporting US ARC that's literally the exact opposite of what you're trying to accomplish. Here's what you need to do. We need to band together into one specific group to understand what is going on. Who's a pretty good person we should have rely on? Who's been really overspoken and really loud about, you know, animal registration, trying to make sure that our rights as keepers are being safe and just all in all pretty a knowledgeable and intelligent guy. Um I'd probably give that to Kevin McCurley. No biases, obviously. Everyone knows I'm a Kevin fanboy, but literally, I mean, as far as, like, who do we want to have step up as a leader and kind of, you know, film this whole thing and push it forward, um, uh, my money's on Kevin McCurley for sure. <laughs> All links of everything we have been talking about will be down in the description, including where you need to go to support US ARC, because I swear to God, if you're not supporting US ARC after this video, I'm gonna be upset. I don't care if you take it out. Get rid of my Patreon. If you're a, if you're a five dollar member on Patreon and you're not a member of US Arc, get rid of my Patreon and go support US Arc instead. I would much rather have that happen than you just being like, oh well, I'm already giving my five dollars to you. I don't care. This thing's bigger than me. This thing is bigger than ever, anyone in the hobby. It is the hobby itself. Uh, number two, we get information on the all the alerts with in depth descriptions. I know I didn't go that much into detail about any of them. There's just too many, and that would make a long video. And honestly, I just can't keep my composure when I talk. About about this stuff I just get really upset and then number three there's gonna be a Facebook group this is the Facebook group to go to if you're going to Facebook groups for supporting US Arc and things like that it's reptile keepers against shit <laughs> Reptile Keepers Against Prejudice. I, I had it right. I thought there was an extra like prejudice laws or something like that. It's Reptile Keepers Against Prejudice. It's a group started by Kevin McCurley for this exact thing of unifying the reptile community and keeping them informed and educated by what's going on. I'll leave the link in the description of that Facebook group right down there. Uh, it's definitely been getting some traction just within the week or two it's been started. Uh, it's went from like 500 members from when I joined to now I just saw it's at 1.6 thousand members. I want to get that way up. I want every subscriber or any person that's watching this video at the very least to be if not already following that group follow that group it's not just information about the US ARC alerts uh, it's really gonna open your eyes to a lot of stuff that's going on and really show you just how separated we are from reptile keepers and the rest of the world we are literally when it comes down to it we are in a fight for ourselves and if we're not coming together for ourselves as a reptile community no one else is doing it for us uh, it clearly shows a bunch of stuff that's going on and just how hypocritical and really just obviously bullshit all these excuses and justifications are um, for any of these reptile bans or really any future bans that are happening. There's a bunch of hypocrisy. It's a bunch of great information. I highly recommend the group. Uh, yeah, go join it. Um, that is my long, angry spiel today. Um, yeah, that's about it, man. Um, to sum it up, a lot of shit's going down and you need to join US ARC. It's not like you should or I suggest, it's you need. If you like your animals, you need to join US ARC. There's no, literally, there's no middleman anymore. We are literally, it's a you're with us or against us type situation at this point in time. Well, that's about it. That's my uh, spiel today. Enjoy a normal video tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be less angry while I film it today. Um, we'll see you guys next time.